Hello students, I am Satish Nair. Today's topic is Light, Reflection and Refraction. And the prerequisite of this chapter. Yeah. Prerequisites of the chapter. One, light travels in straight line. That is said to be the rectilinear propagation of light. Rectilinear propagation of light. Light travels from the source to any point along straight lines only. That will not travel along a curved path like this or that may not be traveling like this and light travels exactly in straight lines. That concept is used for the time being. Rectilinear propagation of light. The second part that is reflection. It is the rebounding of light from one of one surface on which it falls. And reflection, rebounding. Suppose light falls on this board that is reflected from the board to any other direction that depends upon the nature of the surface. Then a mirror. A mirror is a body or a surface which is completely polished so that light can reflect easily and perfectly from that surface. Such a surface is said to be mirror. The plane mirror can be a plane mirror can be represented by this symbol and this shows that on this side no reflection takes place but if a light ray falls on that surface and that light ray is reflected like this. Therefore, only one of the surfaces is reflecting surface and the other surface is not reflecting. And the ray that is incident on that surface, this is known as the incident ray and this is the reflected ray and such concepts are already known to the children. And now we can draw a perpendicular at the point of incidence and that perpendicular can be called normal. That also is a concept you have already <coughs> got familiar with. This is a plane mirror. And the most important law of reflection, law of reflection, that is the angle of incidence, the angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection. You are very familiar with this law too. The angle of incidence means the angle between the incident ray and the normal. And the angle of reflection is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. This is denoted by R. Therefore, angle I equal to angle R. These are the prerequisites of this chapter. To learn more about light, these are the fundamental requirements. Light travels along a straight line and that is rectilinear propagation of light. Reflection is the rebounding of light from a surface, that is reflection. And the mirror is a perfectly polished surface from which light is reflected in a regular fashion. Then what is meant by regular reflection? Suppose light travels here and this is one of the light rays. It is reflected and another light ray which is drawn parallel to the first one that is reflected parallel to the previous incident light, previous reflected light. And one more light ray that is reflected parallel to the previous reflected rays. So incident rays and the reflected rays are remaining to be parallel. This kind of reflection is said to be regular reflection. And normally regular reflection is considered in our discussion of this chapter. Irregular reflection is not a matter for the time being. So angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection. That is the most fundamental law of reflection. And what is meant by a plane mirror that is shown here, this representation is also familiar with you. So next, 
spherical mirrors. Spherical mirrors. These mirrors form form the part of a sphere. These mirrors are considered to be part of a sphere. You can imagine this is a sphere with the center row and we can assume that the sphere is cut by a plane like this. And this part is separated. And now we get a surface which is a curved surface and this curved surface is acting as a mirror and this mirror is said to be a concave mirror. Concave mirror, the reflecting surface of the concave mirror is inward. The inner surface will be reflecting surface and if similarly if a mirror is cut from a sphere and if the inner surface is polished, inner surface is silvered, this process is called silvered and then the outer surface of the sphere, outer surface of that mirror will be reflecting surface and then we can see this is a convex mirror. a convex mirror. So either concave mirror or convex mirror and these are together called spherical mirrors and the spherical mirrors form the part of a sphere that is an imaginary sphere from which is from which the mirror is cut and if the inner surface is the reflecting surface then that is said to be concave and if the outer surface is reflecting surface then that is said to be convex mirror. And obviously there will be a center for that sphere from which the mirror is cut and that center is known as the center of curvature and this is O. This point is known as the center of curvature. Usually O is the letter used to denote that center of curvature or else C can also be used center of curvature for more clarity. So concave mirror and a convex mirror. This can be identified very easily. The reflecting surface from which light can be reflected that is inward that is inside of the surface then that is concave mirror and the convex mirror has the reflecting surface outside and the inner surface is silvered and in this case outer surface is silvered this is concave mirror and convex mirror and whether the reflection takes place from a rough surface or from a mirror or from the so surface of the earth from any other surface the light will be following the same law that is angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection that law is satisfied in all kinds of reflection but for this chapter it, our attention is confined only to reflection from polished surfaces highly polished surfaces are called mirrors and the plane mirror reflection is a reflection that is very easy to explain but these are curved mirrors from which the reflection can take place and which should require some more attention so we will concentrate our attention to these kinds of mirrors concave mirrors and convex mirrors so we have completed rectilinear propagation reflection already it is known to you reflection is the rebounding of the light rays from any surface and the mirror Mirror is the highly polished surface from which light can reflect and laws of reflection out of which one law is far more important and that is angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection and this angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal at the point of incidence 
the terminology is very important this is incidentary reflectedry point of incidence normal at the point of incidence normal means 90 degree is made by that lines with the plane from which light is reflected this is 90 degree and this is the normal angle between the normal and the incident ray is angle of incident angle between the normal and the reflected ray that is said to be angle of reflection these two angles are equal whether light reflects from rough surface or highly polished plane mirror or any surface from which light is reflected therefore this law is true for spherical mirrors too the angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection whether it is reflected from a surface like this and when light comes here and suppose this is a normal and light is incident at the point p and light will be reflected like this but the angle this i is same as this angle r the measurement of these angles will be equal that is true everywhere angle of incidence equal to angle of reflection these parts are completed these are the basic concepts we have to know to advance with our studies in this chapter.